every now and then I'll run across a project that requires a, a piece of thin metal, maybe a, a spring or a, a, a shim or spacer or something, um, something like this. Um, this is a piece of 6061. It's three quarters of an inch wide, two inches long, and 50 thousandths thick. Okay, if you, if you have a piece of sheet metal on hand, um, that'll work, but, but good luck finding a piece of 50 thousandths 6061. It may, may be available, but I don't have any around here. Um, so if you want something like this, you have, to you have to machine it. Now, this is kind of tough to machine. I mean, if you stick it out of the top of your, your vise and try and machine something 50 thousandths thick, that's going to be pretty difficult. I think the, the chamfer on the corner of the vise uh, jaws is close to that. So there's, there's an, I came up with this alternate technique that works pretty well and I'd like to share it with you. First thing we need to do is, uh, well, like first thing I do is put a parallel on the solid jaw here, okay, because we're going to be machining a thin piece of metal against the solid jaw and if you machine across the, the, do, the screw, screw holes like this, it's going to leave a mark in the part. You know, so I just throw a, piece, throw a parallel on it and we'll use that as kind of a spacer on the jaw. All right, next thing I want to do is put an edge finder in the spindle and find that solid jaw. So let's do that. Okay, we'll just run the edge finder in and then hold this parallel against the jaw so it doesn't, so it's against it nice and tight. And we'll just run the edge finder up till it Runs off to the side like that, and I'm going to zero up my digital readout, or if you're using dials, zero up your dials. Okay, now we got to move in half the diameter of this edge finder. Um, this one's 200,000, so we'll move in half that diameter. Okay, that puts us puts the center of the spindle right on this surface of the parallel here. All right, we'll zero out again. All right, now what we want to do is uh, want to offset from this surface half the diameter of the cutter I'm going to use to, to machine the part. Okay, in this case I'm going to be using a half inch end mill. So we want to offset the spindle half of a half inch or a quarter inch. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, maybe about there. Okay, zero out your dials again. Right, let's see where we at where we're at here. Alright. Now Okay, you can see the edge of the cutter now is lined up with the front of the parallel. Alright, so let's go. Next thing you want to do is cut yourself a piece of bar stock, or take a piece of bar stock, three quarters thick in this case, because I'm going to be machining the part out of it just like this. And you have to start out with a wide piece because you have to have enough enough meat on it to clear the parallel or to clear the cutter when you when you machine it. Okay? So we're going to be cutting the part out of it just like this. So grab yourself a piece of bar stock, saw it out, sawing is out, sawing extra material out is always faster than milling it. We could mill this, but it'd take a lot longer. So saw it out, set it in your, your vise on a pair of parallels. Now we want to have the entire part inside the vise. Okay, we don't want anything hanging out past the edge. So we're going to be using the solid jaw to support the back side of the part as we machine it. Don't forget to take your parallels out. We're going 60 thousandths thick on that, or 50 thousandths thick, and the parallel is 125. That's, that would be pretty ugly. So take your parallels out. And let's take a cut. Let's just move into about oh, 55 thousandths off the, off the solid draw of the vise. 
it'll leave us 5,000 to, uh, to finish up. Okay, there's 55, let's go ahead and take the cut on it. It's a little scary the first time you do it, but it's, it's a pretty stable part. The cutter is literally pinning the part against the solid door of the device. So we want to lift up because we're, we're climb milling. Uh, that's another good point. We are climb milling, so if you're using a, a light mill, like a bench mill or a mini mill, make sure you tighten up the uh, drag or the table locks just so it doesn't suck the part into the into the cutter. All right, so there's our roughing cut. Let's crank it right down to 50 thousandths. Take finish cut and see what it looks like. All right, there we go. Okay, we've got a part that's hopefully 50,000 thick or thereabouts. Oh, look at that, right on the money. Okay, that's a pretty easy way to do it. But, you know, that works great for 50. That's, I'm feeling a little reckless today. Let's, let's see how far we can push the process. You can go pretty, pretty thin using this technique. Let's put it back in. Don't forget to take your parallels out and launch them across the shop. Ruin your end mill, ruin your parallel, ruin your day. All right, let's let's see what can we do here. Let's move in. Let's move into thirty thousandths, thirty-two thousandths, one thirty-second of an inch thick. Let's see what happens there. Okay, that's 32 thick. Feeling a little reckless today. Let's see how far we can push it. Let's go into ten thousandths. Might get ugly, hold on. Well, nothing really bad happened. We've got a little warp going on here because we got the stresses from the, the skin on the rolled bar on one side of the part and machined on the other, so it forced it to curve a little bit. Um, you can see this part was, this corner here was over the, uh, the hole in the parallel, so you can see it started to deflect the material into the hole, which is why I use this parallel. But there you go, there's a 10,000th thick piece of aluminum machined. Well, it turned out to be 11 and a half, no big deal. Close enough for for government work. So that's pretty much how it's done. Hope we can hope you can use it out. Use it sometime.